the first two videos, I discussed the pros of both prepaid and contract phones, but now comes the part that nobody wants to hear, the cons of each. And for this video, I'll be concentrating on the cons of having a prepaid phone with information provided by HowStuffWorks.com. I'll also be going back to what I said in part one as backup. The first and foremost con of having a prepaid phone is that the service has a time period. The most common is 30 days, while other providers have 90 day services. Once the next day arrives, your service ends unless you pick up another card. Also, the company does not keep track of what you use. On the other hand, some companies do have auto pay, but you have to be cautious about it. I say this because if something happens to your card and you have auto pay, it's back to picking up service cards each time. The next con is something I mentioned in part one. Because you're paying more for a phone doesn't mean it's a better phone. While it was true I did say that, what I was getting at is that these phones aren't made for a lifetime commitment. They were made as temporary phones. But have people have used their prepaid phones for years? Absolutely! The next con is you're not going to get all the bells and whistles that a contract phone has to offer. To clear that up, what I'm getting at is that there are some features that won't be available on a prepaid phone. But this doesn't include basic phones, regardless of which one you get. The next con is that hidden fees can appear when you least expect it. Let me clarify this. Contract phones won't text you on sending messages, emails, and photos. Prepaid phones, however, could tax you for something like that. The next con is probably something most people tend to get frustrated over, the technical support. In my experience, I've had very little trouble with the technical support. Most people I've helped, however, have had nothing but problems. The main reason? It's because technical support is overseas. Yes, it is true. Most of the technical support is done in another country. This is called offshore outsourcing. What that means is a company will perform some business function in another country than where the product was developed. So what does it accomplish? Cutting costs while getting the work done for less pay. Someday I'll make a video explaining it in greater detail. Now that I got that out of my system, let's continue onward. The next kind of prepaid phones is that the number can't be transferred. That's somewhat true. The best way to put it is say for example, you have a straight talk phone. You want to transfer the number and plan onto a Verizon prepaid phone. While it is possible, it's really not worth the effort. I say this because I've had this happen to me before. You're better off just buying a new phone with a new number until you find your old one. Another issue would be, for example, you buy a phone in 2002. The company says you need to upgrade your phone because either the company is going out of business or has been bought out by a competitor or your phone will stop service. You have no choice but to either have the company send you a compatible phone or you just buy a prepaid phone and card at the store. The final con of having a prepay phone is that some companies require an ID and sellers to keep track of the sale. While it may seem far-fetched, it wouldn't come as a surprise if that proposal became a law. And that takes care of the prepaid phones. Next time I'll be investigating the cons of contract phones. 